Hey guys, this is The Mind of Lilith and thank you for joining me today. I'm going to be sharing my thoughts about Martel and Melody and narcissistic re-idealization. I spoke about this topic a few months ago on my other channel when I stated that Martel basically was going to regret his decision to um, get Arion pregnant and to destroy his marriage and he would make an attempt to reconcile with Melody later down the line once he realizes that Melody was the best source of supply that he had and that was inspired by an episode where Martel said that um, he felt differently now than he did when he first started cheating on Melody and started to destroy their relationship um, intentionally. So I'm going to start off by saying that I'm really, really, really happy that Martel and Melody are now at the point where they're ready to um, put their differences aside for the sake of the children, for the sake of being good co-parents to their children. Even though Melody was always on this type of time, she was always trying to be um, respectful towards Martel and amicable towards him. Martel is now at the point where he is ready to pretend as if he's willing to make amends for what he's done. He's willing to pretend that he regrets what he's done and so on. So I'm very happy that they've come to the point where now they can at least film together. And I don't want my statements to uh, re-incite any animosity between them. That is not the purpose of this commentary. The purpose is to help women who are in similar situations as Melody, who have been discarded by a narcissist after being disrespected, after being devalued, after being triangulated with. Um, my commentary is for them because the narcissist more than likely will make a return to the scene of the crime once he fails to find a better source of supply. Initially, Martel was high off of Arion's supply, high off of someone who would do whatever he wanted to do, right, whenever he wanted to, and someone who was willing to disrespect his wife in the process of showing her loyalty to him. He was high off of that supply. But uh, that kind of supply is like junk food, right? It tastes good and it makes you feel good for the moment, but in the long term, it's not good for you. In the long term, it is never good to be a man's doormat because the man loses respect for you and you have no identity outside of trying to please him. So if he has any issues within himself, he will associate you with those issues because you have basically merged with him. There is no individuation here. You are him and he is you. And if he doesn't like himself, he will learn to not like you too. Or he will eventually grow to not like you either because you don't see yourself as separate from them. You don't distinguish yourself from him. So it is never a good idea to be a doormat to any man and allow him to basically destroy you and use you for whatever he wants. That's never a good idea. In the beginning, he may say it's all good, but towards the end, he's going to feel disgusted with himself and he's going to feel disgusted with you. Because a man who wants a woman to be completely subservient to him usually has other issues. And as the relationship progresses, his feelings for you may grow but his respect for you will also lessen because even if his feelings for you grow, he still doesn't respect you as much because you don't love yourself. So he may love you, but you don't love yourself. So his love for you is going to be tempered and temporary, right? So Martel thought he had feelings for Arion. He thought he loved her. But at the end of the day, once Melody pulled her supply from the situation, he saw that he basically left his kingdom for fool's gold. And that's not necessarily Arion's fault. She is who he is. She is. Martel was never going to settle with her because she's not his preference. Now, it doesn't mean that Arion can't be somebody else's preference because she's a beautiful woman. She still is relatively young and so on. So, but for Martel, that's not his preference for a wife. Arion is his preference for a girlfriend or a mistress or a sexual partner for the time being um, when he's not with his primary supply. Melody is A1 top-notch supply to most men. Why do I say this? Because again, she's very intelligent. She's very strong. And Martel even admitted that when Melody came home from being the boss at her job, she was still doing the wifely, motherly things at home. She was still attentive and nurturing to the children at home and even to him to the point where she got pregnant two times in less than 12 months.
with Martel's children, okay? She got pregnant back to back by Martel because at some point she was submissive to him sexually, even after holding down the fort with two companies that she was running primarily on her back. So Martel actually admitted that Melody was a good wife at home too. It's just that she could not juggle all of those things and satisfy him sexually 100% because he had a lot of time on his hands. Because he didn't have his builder's license, he had more time on his hands to be idle and to think about his meat being hard as opposed to studying for his builder's license so that his wife doesn't have to work as hard. So. He admitted that Melody was a great wife, grade A supply, beautiful, ambitious, intelligent, a go-getter, somebody who openly uh, wants to help other people, someone who's generous with their time and resources. A lot of great things about Melody, A1 supply. Everybody wants to be Melody's friend. Everybody wants Melody to support them and to be a part of their lives. She lifts up everybody in her circle. She's not a jealous, hating, spiteful, pet petty, bitter woman. She's confident in herself. She knows her intrinsic value and her worth as a woman. And um, as a result, she's not, you know, unnecessarily jealous of other women, which is why other women want to be around her because she is an asset. Martel knows that she's an asset too. And because he's failed to find better supply than Melody over the course of their separation and now divorce, he, in my opinion, is going to make an attempt to circle back around to um, reconcile with her down the line. What a lot of women don't know is that narcissists often wait years to reconcile with their supply. It's only been a year and some change since the divorce. It's still fresh. Narcissistic relationships are cyclical. So you go through a cycle of love bombing, of uh, triangulation, of discard and devaluation, of re-idealization and hoovering, then reconciliation and love bombing. It's, go, it's a cycle. It doesn't end the first time it's supposed to end. And normal people, you know, when a relationship is over, it's done with. You don't try to circle back and get more supply from uh, the person that you've uh, basically systematically tried to destroy. Most people will stop at that point, but most people aren't usually aren't the types to try to destroy their exes either. They'll let things be and then, you know, they may have hard feelings about it, but they won't try to destroy their ex-partner. Martel tried to destroy Melody up until a few months ago. He has not changed, okay? He's just at the point now where he's willing to pretend to change in order to further another agenda. I don't know what that agenda is yet, but when you're dealing with narcissists, there's always an agenda, always. Now, I'm not saying this because I don't want Martel and Melody to have a cordial co-parenting relationship. I'm not saying that at all. But for other women in this situation, when a narcissist doubles back around, because this is what happens, right? A lot of women who are disrespected by the narcissist, who are invalidated by the narcissist, they subconsciously want the narcissist to come back to tell them that they were wrong, to tell them that they apologize, to show remorse. That is human nature to want of validation and remorse from someone who basically hurts you so badly. This is what is normal. And narcissists kind of bank on that expectation when they double back around for more supply, okay? Martel, in my opinion, wants more supply from Melody. What kind of supply, right? Because at this point, I've already said this, Martel is triangulating with Melody now. When Martel is with these other women, he is basically triangulating with Melody's ghost. And what's Melody's ghost? Melody's ghost is the ghost of Melody's memories, what he's done with Melody, the memories of them, you know, sharing a life together. He is comparing other women to Melody's ghost, right? To who she was to him in the past. And if these women don't compare, he is going to discard them without any uh, sort of remorse or anything. He's gonna use these women for the next few years. He's gonna use any woman that he's with and he's gonna compare them to Melody. Melody is going to be the third party in all of his relationships going forward. All of the women that he's dating, he's going to compare to top-notch grade A supply. And that is why I feel like he's making reconciliation towards her, not reconciliation. He's making amends towards her. He's acknowledging his wrongdoings and so on and so forth. But as I stated earlier, uh, the type of individual who would do what he did to his ex-wife is not the type of person who will be trusted. 
when Martel was doing this interview with this young lady um, on Fox Soul, the people in the comments were like, oh, I wish you guys would get back together. I wish things were, you know, you guys would reconcile. And on the surface, Martel and Melody were a beautiful couple. It was painful for everybody to see this beautiful young couple who accomplished so much separate. It was really horrible. And I'm sure it was hard for Martel too, because that's why he tried to destroy Melody because he couldn't bear the thought of losing her. When men don't want to lose something, they usually try to destroy it. That is a male's nature. If I can't have you, nobody can. Now, some men know how to, um, you know, deal with those emotions better than others. But a lot of abusive, abusive men feel the need to try to destroy their partners um, once the partner has the, the audacity to leave them in the abusive situation. A lot of people want to see Martel and Melody back together. A lot of people want to see this dream black couple come together. It is really interesting to me that everybody can see how many blessings Martel had except him. And this is usually the mark of low self-esteem or some sort of mental illness. Bro, you have everything. You won early. You won early. You won in your 20s. You found a beautiful young woman who was healthy, who was hot. All the stuff that Melody has to offer, right? And he couldn't see it because he didn't appreciate it because he doesn't love himself. And it's difficult to have any sort of relationship with someone who doesn't love themselves because you are constantly walking on eggshells, trying to make sure you don't trigger them, trying to make sure that you don't do things to offend them. And usually the things that offend these people are the things that are true, are, are your natural personality. Melody's natural, exuberant, vibrant personality was a threat to Martel's ego, okay? And Martel basically destroyed his empire because he couldn't get his dick hard every single day. Because maybe Melody, um, after being verbally abused by Martel, did not feel sexually attracted to him. Because maybe Melody, after having two kids back to back and then another third big baby, you know, while running two businesses, needed to rest physically. Her physiology was changing as a mother. Martel did not care about that. All he cared about was getting his penis hard, getting his ego stroked. So he found someone to do that for him. And once his ego was stroked, he systematically tried to destroy the woman who gave him the luxury of having to worry about such trite things, right? When you have everything you want and you're still a miserable person, you will find an excuse to destroy it. An idle mind and a dry penis is the devil's workshop. Why is an idle mind the devil's workshop? Because instead of Martel saying, you know what, I'm going to take my idle time to study for my builder's license, or I'm going to take my idle time to work with Melody in the office to help her, you know, deal with some of the stuff that she uh, is bringing home from work. I'm going to help her to do whatever she needs to do during the daytime so that she has more time for me. Instead of him taking his idle mind to do that, he used his idle time to try to get his ego and his penis stroked. And then he tried to attack Melody for having an issue with that. How dare you have a problem with me getting my needs met elsewhere if you're not doing what I asked you to do? How dare you be offended by that? You are not doing what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to take care of your man. You guys think Martel feels differently about that now? No, he doesn't feel differently. It's just that now he's in a desperate situation and he knows that he cannot grow professionally and he can't grow socially without Melody's support. Melody is a ride or die. But she said, instead of me dying, I'm going to let this marriage die. Instead of you trying to kill me with your bullshit, I'm going to let this relationship die and our businesses die because I cannot function with a person like you in my life. So let me leave you and your idle mind and busy penis alone. An idle mind and a busy penis is also very dangerous because men will sleep with anything when their minds are empty, but their penis is always in some other crevice, okay? So back to the re-idealization. When a narcissist re-idealize a person, this is happening after the discard phase. And this is usually, again, after the narcissist fails to find an adequate source of supply that is comparable to the supply he just left. What is an adequate source of supply? It depends on what the narcissist values. 
a Martell values social status. He values money. He values beauty. He values public esteem, reputation, and recognition. He values the respect of other people. Um, and he values being looked at as a leader of the community, as someone to be a model um, for success. And that's why he dresses the way that he does. That's why he puts on a good front as if he is a good father and a good man and a good businessman and a good husband. But behind the scenes, he's a fucking monster. So he values being looked at in a certain regard by people in the society. Melody gave him that. Ariana can't give him that. No matter what she does, the fact that he was attracted to her in the first place, he was attracted to his shadow. What is his shadow? Somebody who is ratchet. But he tries to cover up the ratchetry with suits and a beautiful, ambitious wife. But beneath all that, he's a ratchet man. But he doesn't want to be seen as ratchet. He wants to be seen as Mr. GQ. He wants to be seen as Mr. Entrepreneur. Mr. and Mrs. You know, Barbie and Ken, business mogul, power couple. That He misses that dynamic. He misses the way that Melody made him look in public. So even if he is not with her, as far as romantically... Her being associated with him, her saying, no, this is my ex-husband, her showing up on the red carpets with him, her being in his proximity automatically makes him look good because he can tell himself, damn, I caught this. He can tell other men, damn, this is my ex-wife, right? He can look at Melody's accomplishments and try to um, basically make them his own because he was able to attract a woman of Melody's caliber with little to nothing and that raises his stock value to other women and to men in the community so him being around Melody to be honest is a win-win for him it's not necessarily a win for Melody except when it comes to the kids it's great that the kids can see their parents come together and be happy again I'm so happy for the children but if you are a woman in Melody's situation I really want you to be cautious okay about opening the emotional and uh, mental uh, doorway to your partner. Um, once those emotions and those thoughts come into play, it's kind of difficult to manage your feelings. I don't think Melody's going to reconcile with Martel. He's done too much damage, but it doesn't mean that he's not going to try. He's very patient. Narcissists can wait years. I mean, decades sometimes to circle back around and try to get back what they've lost. And it's complicated for Melody because they had a, got a lot of good times together, right? They had a lot of good times together. They were young. That was her first love. Melody admitted they had a lot of great memories together. People want to see them reconcile. They enjoy seeing them together. They look good together. Martell and Melody look really good together as a couple, period. He had it made, man. What a freaking idiot. They want to see him together. And, you know, I'm sure if you are a woman in Melody's position, you're going to think about the good old days, right? We used to do this together. You know, it's for the kids and we're all coming together. And at some point, the narcissist will strike and they will try to replant their flag. They will try to make a claim to you as their ex-partner. They will try to reconcile with you. I'm not saying that that's what Martell plans to do, but a lot of narcissists do this, right? And... I am not um, oblivious to the fact that Martel has not established any relationships outside of his, any solid relationships since his divorce. He hasn't even claimed Arion at all, ever, for seven years. Melody separated from Martel in 2020, in March, I believe, or April 2020. That's been two years. He has not claimed his mistress at all. Not one time. Never said I was his girlfriend. It was, oh, we cool, we straight, that's my homie. Do you know how hard that is to hear as a woman? That's painful. You use a woman for seven years. And the kind of man that would do that, you can't trust someone like that. You can't trust someone who would lead somebody on for seven years sexually, getting them pregnant multiple times just to use you against their ex-wife. And at the end of the day, they still want their ex-wife back. You cannot trust someone like that. Martel does not have good character. And in my opinion, he needs to do a lot of work to be good enough for Melody. He wasn't good enough for Melody before, but he damn sure ain't good now. He needs to do a lot of work. And I'm not saying Melody's going to reconcile, but if you're in Melody's situation and you've dealt with a narcissistic abusive ex that you're, that, you know, that still looks good, right? That's still young and attractive and they coming around 
acting as if they are concerned about you, acting as if they're remorseful about their decisions that they've made and they want to make amends. Please do not be flattered by that. Please don't feel vindicated by the narcissist's, you know, um, admittance of a wrongdoing because you already knew they were wrong. You don't need them to admit that they're wrong. They're using that for credit. And what will they use their credits for? They will try to open the door for reconciliation, especially if they haven't met a better source of supply. Melody will be a third party, as I said earlier, in Martel's future relationships. He will keep her in the back of his mind. He will judge every woman um, by her standard. And to be fair, I understand why, because Melody is a great catch. I'm not saying she's the best woman in the world. I'm not saying that she is a cream of the, well, she is a cream of the crop for, and for many reasons. And I'm not saying that she is like the most perfect, attractive, beautiful, except I'm not saying that. For Martel, that is his dream woman. Melody is Martel's dream woman. And she has four of his kids. He's not going to let her go without a fight. He tried to fight her one way before. He tried to fight her with vinegar. Now he's going to try to fight for her with honey. And like I said, as time progresses and the memories start to fade, right? Well, they don't fade, but they become less painful because there's distance in time, right? And then, you know, the other memories start to come to the surface. Memories of, you know, starting a, birth, a first business together, having the first child together, buying a first home together, going on vacations together, holidays together. Those memories come to the forefront in their very hot sex life. Martella Melody had an exceptionally hot sex life. I saw their birth charts, okay? They have uh, incredible sexual chemistry. Everybody can see it, but the sexual chemistry is Martian. It's very aggressive. It's, uh, it's selfish. It is um, inconsiderate, right? It is, I want you now, I demand you, and I'm going to devour you when I get you. At first, it's cute, right, to have that kind of energy, but over time when you're married and you have other obligations, you don't have the energy to uh, meet the person at that level all the time. And Martel expected Melody to show up the way she did when they first got married, and that's not fair to her. So he got frustrated and started to look elsewhere to have his Martian sexual needs met. But Martel is banking on the good memories and the good experiences that he had with Melody, and he had a lot of them. He had a lot of them and that is working to his advantage. If a woman is in a situation like Melody and she married someone like Martel, this woman would probably be thinking about all the good times they had together. Melody still cares about Martel. If she didn't care about him, she would have tried to destroy him and she could have easily done so. But she cares about him as a human being, right? She cares about him as a, as a father of her children, as her ex-husband. She cares about him a lot because in the beginning, they had a, a relatively good relationship and she fought hard for the marriage. He's done so much damage though, but it doesn't mean that she doesn't care about him as a human being. And Martel would try to use that to get in the door. Or he would try to use Melody, in my opinion, to make himself look better in the public, which will help his businesses and his brands. He will try to use Melody for his own enrichment, I believe. I wouldn't be surprised if he's asking Melody for advice on business. I wouldn't be surprised if he's asking Melody for advice on relationships or whatever. He's trying to uh, use her as a source of supply, whether she wants to be or not. As a matter of fact, Melody is Martel's supply, whether she wants to be or not. I wouldn't be surprised if he fantasizes about her sexually. I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks about her when he's with other women. Period. Not to be too vulgar, and I'm not trying to do all that, but I'm explaining how narcissists think, and they don't let go of the things they value very easily, like a toy. And as I've said it before, narcissists are like children with toys. A child can have a favorite toy, right? And they're playing with it every single day. The toy is his favorite toy. And then the narcissist decides to put this, the child decides to put the toy to the side. It is bored with the toy. It wants a new toy. But that old toy is collecting dust. And then somebody else picks up that old toy and the narcissist wants the old toy again. Narcissists treat their partners like objects. Okay, he thought that he could dismiss and devalue and denigrate Melody, right? Martel thought that he could devalue and denigrate and dismiss Melody and she would always be there for him to pick up his bullshit, to make him look good. And so when she decided to leave, he became desperate. 
and then he tried to destroy her before she left him. What is the point of destroying your partner before they leave you? This is, in my opinion, a function of separation anxiety. If I can't have you and if I don't want to lose you, I'd rather see you dead or gone or destroyed or worthless before I can walk away from you. Because you're so valuable to me, I'd rather destroy you than have somebody else have you. There's an old David Ruffin song that says, I'd rather leave you holding on than pushing me away. When Melody killed her feelings for Martel, Martel felt like a part of him died. A part of his identity and self-worth died with that. Because Melody's love for him gave him value, right? So what a lot of men do, and I'm going to talk about this later on. I was going to talk about this months ago, but... It's a very, very, very heavy topic, and I'm just like not really eager to talk about it. But a lot of men, when they lose the love of a woman, right, they feel like a part of them has died. And sometimes when a man feels like a part of him has died, he goes on the attack. His trigger response is to try to destroy the very thing that made him feel like he died. This may be a physical destruction a mental destruction or an emotional destruction. But men who feel like they've lost something of value, which in turn um, made them feel less valuable within themselves. So they uh, try to destroy the thing that gave them that value in order to affirm their own value or in order to reinforce their value within themselves. So if I can destroy the queen, I'm still the king. And Martel tried to take Melody's crown off of her head because she took his crown off of his head. But you can't take the crown off of someone who gave the crown to themselves, right? Melody built her own crown. She's her own crown and glory, right? Martel's crown came from Melody though. She appointed him to be king. That's how he felt about it. And that is true. Melody appointed Martel as king of her kingdom, the children that she had, the businesses. She made him king. Melody could do that with any man. She's the kingmaker in that situation. And Martel knows this. That's why he tried to take Melody's crown, but could not do it because she made her own crown. So Martel thought that she was like him, that he could try to take from her what she made for herself. But she could take Martel's crown from him because she gave it to him. And her divorcing him made him look like a pauper, a peasant. And a Capricorn can stand nothing more than to be looked down on as a peasant, as not the king. He didn't know that Melody was the one who coronated him when she decided to marry him. He didn't know until she left. And he resents her for that, having that kind of power and for knowing that she has that kind of power. A lot of men don't want women, the women that they're with to know how much power they have over them. That makes them angry and makes them insecure and it makes them aggressive. So they try to destroy their partners um, when they their partners start to realize, oh, I have all this power here. I don't really need you like that. I'm better off without you for real. What the fuck are you here for? The men don't like that at all. They want you to have power to the extent that it benefits them. When you realize that your power is actually benefiting you and them and you don't really need them because your power is still within you once you leave them and it's not something they can give you, it's something that's an integral part of your identity, who you are as a person, they hate that. And that's why a lot of pimps try to take power from women by verbally abusing them, by taking their money. They have to break a woman down. If you read the forums and conversations And listen to conversations that men have with each other. The first thing they say is to try to break a woman's mind. Get into her head. Make her feel like she needs you so that she can give her innate power to you. That is the purpose of marriage. I'm going to talk about that in my astrological series on my other channel. About why marriage was designed to subjugate the woman. The feminine energy. But anyway, yeah. Back to realization. Not to go off on a tangent too much. Um... Martel is in the process of thinking about the good old days and you know he's going to forget conveniently forget everything that he's done the good news is he can't forget the baby right and Melody can't forget the baby either there's evidence of his transgressions there is information in the public domain now about how much he's abused his wife the show itself is a documentary of the downfall of their relationship and what actually happened. And I really hope Melody watches all that footage. 
if she ever considers reconciling with him. I don't think she's going to do it, but I'm just saying as a woman, right? If you've been in a situation like Melody has, please watch the first two seasons of Love and Marriage Huntsville and how much Melody actually worked to try to hold on to the thing that she valued the most. She knew that her marriage was valuable. She knew her husband was valuable to her to an extent. She knew her businesses were valuable and she worked hard to hold on to those things, right? And um, Martel didn't appreciate him. You can't do it by yourself. Melody cannot do it by herself. She cannot want the marriage more than a man wants to be married. So Martel was so in his wild oats. He cheated for half of their marriage. They were married for 11 years and he started cheating around year five or six. He was probably cheating before that. He did not deserve her. He did not deserve her or he got married too quickly. He found her too fast. But I suspect that if he hadn't found her when he did, that Melody would be way out of his league in five or 10 years. If they had met now, Melody would be way out of his league. She wouldn't even see him. So he got, he kind of got her really quickly because he had to. I mean, he married her when she was 22 years old. She was a baby. Imagine her at 30 now meeting, imagine a 30 year old Melody that hadn't met Martel with a 39 year old Martel or 34, 35 year old Martel. Martel would not have a snowball's chance in hell to be with Melody. I'm sorry in my opinion. And he knew this. So he got her early when she was really green and naive about certain things and eager to help and work on a relationship. And she wanted to make it work that he used that to his advantage. That's why a lot of Kevin Samuels fans say, yeah, get him when they're really young. You can mold them. You can impress them with your dustiness because they don't expect much, especially if they haven't had a father in their life. So again, to recap this, if you are a woman in Melody's situation, please do not be flattered by the narcissist's attempts to apologize or to uh, be conciliatory or to admit their faults. You can't go from a raging maniac who's trying to destroy your ex to now this person who wants peace and love. No, there's an agenda. Narcissists always have an agenda agenda. It is a great thing for Melody to uh, be cordial with Martel for the sake of their children. It is great for the children to see their parents not arguing. It is great for their children to see their parents attend events together, to come together as two loving parents who love their children so much. That's an amazing thing to see. I don't want that to not happen. But on a romantic tip, right? On a personal tip, um, as a grown woman, as an adult, right? Um, who has been in an abusive situation. I hope that Melody and women who are in similar situations keep an eye out for attempts at reconciliation or attempts at triangulation because I suspect that once Martel meets another woman, another girlfriend that he's interested in, he will triangulate with Melody as well as far as, you know, if he and his girl get in a fight, he will call Melody up for some sort of moral support. Um, you know, he will start to compare his girlfriend to Melody to say, this is who she is and who are you? I don't have to commit to you. Look at who I can attract. Look at who I had the ability to bag at an early age. You better step up your game before I find someone else just like her. These are the games that some narcissists play. And I don't want Melody to fall victim to that. She's a smart woman. But her disadvantage is the fact that she wants to co-parent with Martel for the benefit of their children. And she still cares about him as a human being, as a person, as a woman. She has a big heart. Most women have bigger hearts than men. And so she doesn't want Martel to fail. She may help him with his businesses. She may help him to become a better version of himself because she wants to see that for him as a human being. And she wants that for her children. So it's a very slippery slope situation that she's in. It's very um, it's sensitive and we need to give her time and grace, right? And not expect her to do things the way we want her to. I'm going to make sure I don't do that. And I'm going to make an effort going forward to be responsible with my commentary as far as not trying to refuel the flames of contention between Martell and Melody. Not try to be instigate mess. If they're in a better place, I hope that Carlos King respects that. And he does not try to um, use the show as an opportunity to 
just, you know, fan the flames or whatever. People do want to see Martel and Melody film together again. They look great on camera together. They have great chemistry together on camera. It's so crazy. Even the way they look at each other, Martel and Melody, you know, they have so much chemistry on scene. It's almost like a Mr. and Mrs. Smith situation, right? With Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. People watched the movie to watch how attractive the couples were. Even though they had a really nasty relationship, they were always fighting, whatever. Um, they were enemies in a sense, but people enjoyed to see them together because they're visually attractive people and they have great chemistry, period. And that's, again, a complicated situation to be in. I hope Melody doesn't fall for the, oh, I want to see you guys together again. I don't think she will, but you guys, you know, whoever's asking for them to reconcile, please watch seasons one and two. Please don't do that to her. Don't try to shame her or guilt her into being back with this man. He ruined what he has. He has to go through extensive therapy for years before Melody should even consider reconciling with him. He needs to be in therapy every single week for years. Somebody mentioned uh, seven years and seven seasons in the comment section. Absolutely. He has to prove himself consistently for years before I would even want Melody to consider reconciling with him. It's too soon now. And to be honest, it should be fuck that nigga forever. But they got really young babies together. Milani's only two years old, right? That's a long time to like not have the father in the house with the kids. And that's exactly what you want too. Martel should have done what Melody suggested before. Have them swap out houses. They stay in the same she stays in the same marital home. Martel comes over, you know, gets the kids for a couple of days or a couple of weeks and she's out in another place, something like that. But he made it so difficult to do anything, even though it was his fault this happened. Like Melody should feel disgusted by the sight of him. She really should. But I think over time, people will forget, the audience will forget and they'll say, damn, I wish they could get back together. I miss the good old days. No, we got to stay the course. We gotta stay focused and remember what actually happens um, in these situations when the woman decides to give the narcissist another chance. You guys gotta remember, Melody gave Martel several chances. She left him before the show even started. Then she left him again, you know, once the show uh, filmed and she was like separate from him before the baby was born and he was still acting up. He was still acting up. So all of a sudden now you don't have nothing and you're dry and you're broke and I'm supposed to be back to rescue you because you feel like, oh, I'm sorry now. You're only sorry because you lost everything. You're not sorry because of how you actually treated me. If Martel was on top and making all this money and have all the success with business and the women, he wouldn't feel shit. He would not feel anything towards Melody. He would feel like, yeah, I was justified in my actions because look how successful I am without her. But because he hasn't met, you know, he's not at that point, he now sees that Melody was his golden goose essentially okay but anyway i'm gonna leave it there this is going to be a part one because i'm sure i forgot something well this is like part two i'm sure there'll be a part three i'm sure i forgot something um because sometimes when i go on rambling you know my mind goes in different directions anyway i look forward to reading your comments please like share and subscribe and i will speak to you soon